welcome once again uh, to Stephen Green. Um, Stephen's up to his eyes uh, lambing, uh, and Judy is. Um, there you go, uh, Stephen. Is it like giving birth in the real sense as a farmer? <laughs> it's uh, it's a wonderful time of the year, and uh, when you, when you see the, the the new life coming forth, as, as it were, and um, yeah, I mean, obviously there are you know there are challenges. Um, we have one lamb that we're, we're, we're bottle feeding because the mother doesn't have quite enough milk. So uh, these, these things happen, and um, but you know we give we, we give we give the Lord all the all the all the glory, all the praise. We've had about I think about a third of the of, of the flock that is due as as lambed already. So it's uh, it, it, it's a good time, and um, yeah. Well, how long does it go on for? Yeah, the so the ovine. Um, Fertility cycle is twenty-one days, right. so every twenty-one days she, she's coming into season. Um, they, uh, 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 which means that if if the ram tucks them all at the at the right time, the the, the whole lambing should be over in twenty-one days. But it, sometimes it doesn't quite happen like that. You get some that, that, that a little bit a little bit early, and then some that, that will you know maybe it didn't take first time and. Can drag on, but we pray that it won't. We pray it's well, over in 21 go. days. Well, that's life, as they say. Well, there you go. And um, let's go uh, over to Russia. And uh, Putin is not the most creditable or popular per person at the moment. Uh, but um, are there two sides to this character? Are we just giving the Western and hearing the Western side about Putin? I think so. Um, it, it, you know, when you like hear people's comments and they're, they're saying, "Oh, Putin is a bad man. He's a thug. He's a this. He's a that." Um, all they're doing is repeating what they've heard on the mainstream media. Uh, you know, none of them actually knows him. <laughs> um, he's um, from the interview with Tucker Carlson. He did. He, he comes across a very um, particular and, uh, and pedantic uh, man. He's uh, he's a, a, a pains to explain. Uh, Russian history to you um, in minute detail um, as he sees it. So uh, you know he is he is thorough. He is meticulous. He is you know he's not a stupid man. He's a clever man, and uh, and obviously he has a you know has a uh, he, he has a grip on on, on power. Um, for me, I, I would um, you know I would really rather like it if uh, if his if the political discourse was was more open in Russia. But hey, what do I know? Um, you know, I mean, for, you know, when I look around the, you know, the United Kingdom, and I, you know, I see our our political system, and you know, and how well that is doing. You know, I'm not really, I don't think I'm really in a sort of a position to criticise the one in Russia. You know? Well, no, 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 I can I can understand what you're saying, but we we don't tend to use umbrellas and poison people to get our own way, do we? No, uh, yeah, uh, uh, um, allegedly, uh, there, there's a there's a whole there's a lot of smoke and mirrors goes on in in in, in, in the intelligence world, uh, and, and make no mistake, Rodney, but whatever, but whatever, <laughs> whatever they're doing, our lot are doing as well. So you know, don't don't make any mistake about that. Um, but you know, when they accuse some um, uh, like sort of China of, of of spying or espionage or disinformation or something. Our lot, MI5, MI6, are doing exactly the same. There is a difference in the fact that uh, once you get in power in China or Russia, you're uh, in there for a long time. Now, uh, convince me that those are genuine, open, um, free-thinking people going to polling booths and actually casting genuine votes. You can't stay in power that long and not be corrupt. No, 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 no that's what I'm saying. All, all I was doing was talking about the intelligence community, the, the, uh, and that, that that is all. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, China has, at the moment, has incredible problems. Their, their population is set to shrink, and the, you know, the economic powerhouse that it was supposed to become is is going to, is, is, is going to whitter away. Um, a lot of it comes down to the uh, to, to the, 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 the the stupid and illogical and ungodly one-child policy um, of the seventies um, and eighties. Um, so, so a lot of it comes, you know, comes down to to that. I'm thinking about what you just said then, because um, in the seventies, uh, the big thing was there, uh, of course, and China followed it, hook, line, and sinker. We're all going to die by the year 2010 because we'll be overpopulated. 
the world will just sink below people. Now, uh, that didn't happen. Quite the opposite happened. Uh, you can therefore perhaps see a comparison here with the climate change lobbyists. Oh, we're all going to die in 10 years. Yeah, you can. Uh, uh, and it was uh, people like Paul Ehrlich, Professor Paul Ehrlich, and his um, his his book, The Operation Bomb. Then there was uh, the Limits, I think from the, the Club of Rome, which was wealthy people <laughs> getting together. Um, that was in 1972, the limits to growth. Uh, we're all going to, you know, we're all going to die. We won't be able to produce enough. Um, all the resources are going to run out. There's more uh, catalogued resources now than there were then. Uh, our farmers are producing a lot more now than they were then, irrespective of, of, of the fact that um, the European Union and the climate fanatics want to, uh, uh, you know, declare sort of war on farmers. Um, but um, the, the, the farmers, to coin a phrase, are now revolting, <laughs> and um, both in both in Europe and and here in Wales, which where they've the the Welsh government have tried to bring in the same sort of uh, same sort of things. But no, the, the the population controllers were wrong then. The, the Malthusians were wrong, and, uh, and and the climate fanatics are wrong now. It's all all down to control. Uh, some people say it's down to uh, that they want um, depopulation. Uh, I'm pretty convinced that, that they think people like um, you know the popular. Who should we single out? I'm not going to single anybody out. You you know the people that they think they definitely think there are too many Africans. That's for sure, absolutely too many Africans. Uh, but um, according to a, a new report, I think for the World Bank, well, I might be wrong about that. Um, it's only Africa that is going to keep um, uh, the world population um, increasing. It well. Um, not even increasing, but to stop it decreasing to a to a, 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 a to a dangerous point, the, the population is going to show a decline. They're saying now by the end of this century. That's a long way in the future. Uh, but uh, but you see, in it, definitely in the West, um, in China for sure, um, in South Korea, in Russia for that matter, um, the people aren't having enough children. Uh, you need 2.1 children per woman just to replace the population, apparently. And uh, like the birth rate in South Korea is down to 1.2. In China is not, not very far off that. Um, Italy, 1.4. The United Kingdom, 1.5. It's just shrinking, shrinking, shrinking all the time. Now, the fact is, um, David Attenborough, if, you, if, you, if you're watching, uh, listen up, um, as... As populations become more prosperous, so they have fewer children. Um, for, for the poor, for poorer people, their children are their wealth, uh, and, and that's how they see it. Uh, so, uh, as a population, as a as a society becomes more prosperous, so its birth rate declines. But um, when it declines to the point of of e extinction, like there are too many um, pensioners, not enough workers to you know to provide for in whatever system you have. Um, then, then you're in for trouble. Yeah, there is problems because, um, in on one respect, it is sub-Saharan Africa that have got the numbers to uh, replicate, and they're doing their bit, if you wish. But it's not just a question of importing these people. Quite the opposite, many people think, because the culture is so alien to the Northern European culture or the American culture. So you've got an immediate problem there. The other problem, which Spain has, where we are, uh, has experienced for many, many years, they've got the lowest birth rate practically in the world, been going on for a long way. Some people say, oh, it's a protest against Franco. Uh, it's a protest against church. Certainly that's true because the Roman Catholics have suffered a lot with a swing to the left. Now we can point, this to communism, to Marxism, maybe. Uh, we seem to be able to blame everything on, on that. But it's a godless religion, Stephen. So I presume you wouldn't support anything that's vaguely Marxist. The Marxists, of course, see, see, see the whole world differently for Christians. Uh, to a Marxist, everyone is born good and the structures of society corrupt him. In Christian and Jewish thought, um, uh, mankind is born in sin, um, it, it, with uh, um, 
you know, original sin in depravity, and we need the structures of society to contain us. So that's a big difference between between the two. So, so obviously, and the Marxist um, system is is one of, of control as well. You have to have a command control economy, a little bit like again, like the uh, like the net zero fanatics are trying to do in in, in here and, and and in Europe with. Um, um, heat pumps and uh, and electric vehicles telling you exactly how you should drive, exactly how you should heat your home. If the products were any really good, Rodney, people would buy them. Um, you know, so I, 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 I'm all for the market in deciding in this particular point of view. But you, you mentioned people coming from overseas. D don't forget, people coming from Africa, many of them from sub Saharan Africa, not North Africa for sure, and bits of sub Saharan Africa become North Africa in, in the Sahel. Um, but I talked about Christian Africa and the Christian Caribbean. Th those they actually have the same values as um, well as we used to have. Uh, it, it's it's people from the Islamic cultures who have uh, um, uh, different different values, um, and of course uh, uh, um, Hindus also have uh, um, have, have different values because your value is built around your religion. You see. So uh, um, you know, Hindus have different, but their their religion is not expansionist like that of Islam. Um, I you know firmly think that with um, with the uh, uh, you know with natural fecundity, and you know, don't blame Muslim women here for having children for you know for the, d doing what their bodies are designed to do. Uh, you know, blame the, um, uh, the, the 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 Christian folks for for not reproducing. But nevertheless, uh, when you import that kind of um, religious uh, mindset in, into into a Christian country, you're going to have a tension at the moment in Britain, because we have a three-way tension between Christianity, secularism, and Islam, which is the new kid on the block. So, uh, yeah, the, it is the immigration is a is a danger, and of course, we're having stories now at the moment of the um, the man um, the the, uh, the Clapham um, corrosive substance. Um, uh, 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 Attacker, and I forget his his name eludes me at the moment. Uh, but um, he pretended to be uh, a Christian. He pretended to have converted to Christianity. A Baptist minister stood up in court to say that his conversion was genuine. It was never genuine. He, he, he was still a Muslim. He was still you know buying his halal food and all meat and all the rest of it. He was uh, you know in no way did become a Christian. So uh, the, the the church has allowed itself to be like weaponized by. By the um, uh, asylum seekers, and we all want to be nice and 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 and, and gentle and kind these days. But uh, you know, when when uh, your national security is is an issue, then um, you know you need to be a little bit more careful. Which probably brings us back to Moscow's Moscow and the Crocus City Hall massacre. Indeed, it does. Um... That was bizarrely covered up by the fact that Kate uh, announced that she has cancer. And you had to go to page nine on any newspaper to find out anything about that horrific attack. So uh, we've got our priorities a bit mixed up here, haven't we? Well, uh, 137 people died in the in a Crocus City Hall massacre. It's almost, almost a carbon copy of the Bataclan massacre in Paris in 2015. Uh, the common thread being uh, being attack on, uh, on 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 a rock music concert, which of course in Islamic eyes is totally forbidden, totally haram. Uh, the same thing, arguably, at uh, the Manchester Arena um, in 2017, if I'm not very much mistaken, um, with um, um, Abedi, I think that the man was called, who blew himself up, killed 22 people. Uh, about 130, about the same number of people died in Paris as died in Moscow. You know, in the, in the in their respective massacres, 130. Now, uh, and now we come on to the to the man that you that you started a conversation with, and that's uh, Vladimir Putin, blaming Ukraine for the for the um, uh, for the massacre and saying that the uh, that the attackers were, were trying to escape to to Ukraine. That's now been contradicted by uh, um, Alexander. Uh, Lukashenko, um, uh, President Putin's friend, the president of Belarus, who says, no, actually, he says, the suspects are trying to flee, flee to Belarus. It was only when they couldn't get into Belarus that they turned left and tried to go into Ukraine. And they were, you know, and they were caught. And these are uh, the, these are Tajikistan nationals, okay? They're, they're from an area of the world which um, 
it, it was historically known as Khorasan. So their Islamic State offshoot is now ISK, Islamic State Khorasan. And it's beyond any shadow of a doubt that they were responsible for it. Now, you can say, well, OK, but they, they were put up to it by the CIA. You can say that, but I don't. I don't think they need. Put, I don't think they need any putting up to it. I mean, you know what? Who was putting up the the IS um, attackers in in Paris in twenty fifteen, or uh, Abedi in, in in Manchester? You know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. There is just one way in which President Putin has their a uh, little grain of truth, and that is that if it had not been for the. Um, for the incursion of the US and the UK into Iraq in 2000 and was that 2003 or 2013 can't can't remember but um that started up the idea of islamic state that there will be the islamic state state of the uh, uh, of the levant uh, and of syria so that 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 gave rise to islamic state our, our actions in iraq gave rise to islamic state and it was earlier on even earlier than that um the when the when, when the Russians invaded Afghanistan in 1997, I think, uh, and they did that to support the socialist government in Afghanistan, which was a, a, a Soviet uh, um, outpost. Uh, they, so the, the so the Soviets are fighting a Mujahid, a, a, a Mujahideen uh, in Afghanistan supporting the socialist government. The Americans thought it would be a really clever idea. To start up their own uh, jihadist uh, group and finance it and get it going, and that became known as Al Qaeda. And so Al Qaeda were fighting; um, they're fighting the Taliban. They always do, and they're fighting the Russians in Afghanistan. But I mean, you know, setting up Al Qaeda worked. That 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 as one might as Jordan Peterson might well say that turned out well, didn't it? Um, with the, you know, with the bombing of the Twin Towers in two thousand and one. So that was uh, you know a real United States. Own goal, but you know we do we do st stuff like this. That's what I said about in in intelligence services. Our intelligence services are, are, are arming um, and setting up all sorts of things. Uh, the, the the UK Foreign Office set up the the, the so called White Helmets in, in Syria, which marketed itself as a humanitarian group, but it was embedded with the jihadists. Um, so you know we we funded it and trained it. Uh, we even know the name of the man of the Foreign Office operative who who was in charge of it. His name was uh, uh, Lemesher. Um, he uh, was um, uh, lived in in Istanbul. There's a picture of him on the on the quayside in Istanbul, uh, and he, he died now. He died, died falling from an apartment in Istanbul. It's all smoke and mirrors, Rodney. It's all smoke and mirrors. So in that sense, that yeah, the UK and the US are responsible for for Islamic State. Yeah, it's true. We're also responsible, of course, for the floods of migrants coming across from the Middle East um, from the wars that we started. Uh, the U.S. has uh, been blamed for lots of things, uh, and very recently, it um, is no longer supporting the Jews, or Biden isn't. Um, he's um, turned his back on the nation of Israel. Um, now the whole world are against them. And just as Israel were about to take the southern city, which needs taking if you're going to get rid of Hamas once and for all, uh, suddenly um, they, they are threatening not to give them the arms they want. Um, and mm -hmm. Israel are saying, well, we're not confident of going in there without support of America. We don't think we can do it. Yes, I know. And th there was a, re a resolution passed in the United Nations um, the only a couple of days ago um, a calling for a ceasefire. It also called for the release of the hostages, but it didn't link them as it has before. Um, the UK voted for the motion. Previously, they would have abstained, and the America, the US, United States, abstained where previously they would have vetoed it. So that's a very dangerous turn turn of affairs for um, for, for Israel, and also for the United Kingdom and for the United States, uh, because, uh, well, any country that's voted against Israel in this, don't forget, Israel has a right to defend itself. And uh, the 
it has a right to defend itself from the from the Hamas militants. And uh, uh, you know we're, we're we're well familiar with the, the passage in the Bible where, where it says that um, uh, you know to, God says to Abraham, "Indeed, will all the families of the earth be blessed? I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee." Now, some people say, "Well, yes, okay, that's all very well," but um, 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 Abraham was also the the father of Ishmael, so you know, so so the arrows are blessed as well. So that leads me actually to see that God promised to to Abraham that the, that the, his promises would reside in Isaac and not in Ishmael. Um, then, of course, Isaac had uh, two sons, uh, and Jacob, Jacob, and and Esau. Um, who becomes the uh, father of the Edomites. We don't know much about them at the, uh, now, but anyway, we still have to deal with the Ishmael question. And that's why it's really rather helpful that in the Bible, in the book of Numbers, we read of uh, of the people of Israel uh, expanding uh, uh, um, over into uh, um, it, it, um, into Canaan, and, and they hire the working um, Balak, hires the prophet Balaam to go and curse the Israelites. So it takes them up to a high mountain, sees them all spread out, and says, look, I'm going to pay you a whole lot of money, and I want you to curse them for me, because this man of God is a powerful prophet, you see. And to, to Balaam's horror, Balaam uh, refuses to curse them, because he's hearing from God, and God says to bless them. There's a very key passage in Numbers chapter 24, um, verse 9, Balaam talking about, um, well, if I go from verse 8, Balaam is saying, God brought him, that's Israel, forth out of Egypt. He has, it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, as a great lion, and who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. So that is said to regard Israel. Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. So let's look, uh, we have the United Kingdom and the United States have cursed Israel with their votes. So you know we can expect some kind of uh, of a reparation from the Lord to come on our nations because of that. It's a really very dangerous situation. I agree with you that, that Israel simply must Go into into Rafa and and deal with the the remainder of of Hamas. But you know, once again, smoke and mirrors into geopolitics, international relations, and uh, you know things are never never as they seem. And uh, you know, there are going to be some dodgy characters in Britain and in the US who who uh, who hate the Jews and who want to see uh, um, Hamas succeed but facts in all this and one of the facts is that there are 24 or were 24 command centers for hamas throughout gaza israel have managed to get rid of um 20 of them there's only four left and they're right deep in the south and it's absolutely crucial they get rid of these four uh centers now um having said that it is clearly becoming a way uh, of, um, that the Israelis are aware that Hamas are not fighting like they used to be. They completely lost heart. There's a lot of people surrendering to the Israelis um, from the troops in Gaza. So things are not going well uh, for the Palestinians. This is not the time, perhaps, to acquiesce to everything that the rest of the world, inverted commas, seems to be won over to the side of the Palestinians. It's quite remarkable, Stephen, when you see march after march in the United Kingdom and indeed other countries, but especially the United Kingdom, um, something here, and you may well be right, is of a spiritual nature. It's odd. It doesn't stack up that there's so much hate in all this. Well, it does when the uh, you know when the when the hatred is coming from from Muslims because um, genocide of the Jews is an article of faith for Muslims. Um, 
this is an uncomfortable thing uh, to say, and you won't hear this uh, on the mainstream media, but um, in the Hadith, which are the stories of, of, of Muhammad, um, there is a passage near the end uh, which says that the end will not come until the Muslims will fight the Jews, and the Jews will hide behind rocks and trees, and the rocks and trees will cry out saying, uh, oh, uh, a Muslim, uh, um, Abdallah, servant of Allah, uh, there is a Jew hiding behind me, come and kill him. And that's in the Islamic scriptures. So it, 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 that's, that, that's an, an, an uncomfortable thing. That's one of the reasons why you can't have a multicultural society in the sense that they that they wanted it, because you know, how can you have in, in, in Britain uh, you know, a whole people following a religion which wants a genocide of, 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 of a subset of the population? It, it doesn't make any sense. And of course, so, so that's, that's the most, that's the, that, that's the Muslim angle to it, but also you have the left and, uh, and the left, you see, the left don't have a moral compass. The left have a power compass, a race compass and a, and, and a, and a money compass. Um, in, in the early days when, when Israel was, was tiny and the people were going to the, uh, the left wing, uh, kibbutzim movement, Israel was seen as good. But since Israel has won wars against its Arab na neighbours and become prosperous, and Jewish people are hardworking, make no mistake about that, they are going to become prosperous. So they have become um, a, a caste. Or, or, and Jews are also seen as white and Muslims as non, uh, the Arabs as non-white. And I, I know that doesn't really work, but anyway, that's how this, that, that's how the left see it. So basically, the, the Jews in Israel tick all the bad boxes, right? The, the race box. The, the power box um, and the um, and the wealth box and the and the Palestinians tip uh, as, as we might call them tick all the good boxes you see so therefore um, Israel is now an oppressor group and the Palestinians are the oppressed and in the and, and, and don't don't expect logic here there's no logic there's no moral compass whatever an oppressed group do is right. And whatever an oppressor group do is wrong. No matter what they do, it's wrong. So if Israel bomb Gaza, that's wrong. That's genocide. If they if they tell the the, the people to evacuate because they're going to bomb a, a, a Hamas um, stronghold, that's ethnic cleansing. So Israel can do nothing right, and of course Hamas can do nothing wrong. Uh, and and you need so to see that from the left point of view is, is an important thing. So you have the left and, and, and Muslims all marching together because um, they, they, they all hate Israel as, as an oppressor, as the occupiers. Uh, so if anybody's occupying, that, uh, by the way, it's the, it's the Arabs because the land was given to Israel. But there we are. That's another that's another story. But we are now in a position with the United Nations of, um, you know, multi-Jews, multi-Jews and the value of decision of uh, all the nations coming against Israel. And um, you know there are going to be there are going to be lots of people now looking out for um you know scanning the scanning the signs for the uh, for the immediate appearance of the Lord. I'm not going to be among them. Um, if the Lord is coming back tomorrow, he's going to want to know what I was doing today. So uh, you know I have I I, I I'm going to stay in my in, in my prophetic lane and uh, uh, and not go uh, and not go scanning the scanning the clouds. Well, finally, Stephen, I know one thing you've been doing for year after year after year. And that is protesting in London about the mega mosque. It goes on. Has it just been kicked into the long grass? Yeah, effectively it has. Um, the uh, this is the the, the mosque uh, which was um, intended by its trustees to be built on the site of an old chemical works near West Ham Station in East London. Um, the chemical works itself having been built on land which was uh, in times past uh, the site of a major Cistercian Abbey, um, as as indicated by the name of the nearest railway stage, which is Abbey Road Docklands Light Railway. Uh, the, uh, the the we meet to pray on what is what the what the council uh, euphemistically call the Greenway. It's actually the Northern Outfall sewer, which uh, uh, the Victorian engineer Basil Jett built from North London all the way to Beckton to the sewage treatment plant, um, and and along it he had to he had to lift he had, uh, had to build pumping stations to lift the sewage from from street street level 
up to the northern outfall sewer. The one that we can see from where we play is called the Abbey Road Pumping Station. So the the Abbey is 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 also just like Judy does from Level Facts, and, uh, and, and so it's a really historic Christian site, and the Muslims are occupying it, and, uh, and we don't we, we don't like that. And then they announced back in was it two thousand and six or something they were going to build a mega mosque. So it's going to be the biggest place of worship in Europe. It was going to be a, a 6,000 seater, I think it should be Matt mosque. Uh, and, uh, and so we got down, you know, one of our, one of our members said, Good thing, we need to be praying about this. So we got down there on the first Saturday in January, 2007, and had a prayer meeting in the pouring rain to pray against this, uh, the, 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 this, this mega mosque, which they said was going to be up in time for the Olympics, the London Olympics 2012. Well, we kept on praying and, um, and, and they, the, you know, the the Olympics came and went, and uh, they held a, an open day, put in a planning application. All sorts of things happened in the local council. Uh, our friend Adam Craig got elected as a as the sole opposition candidate, a uh, Christian People's Alliance candidate. He was joined by two comrades in four, four years' time, so they were opposing it. And then, by the grace of God, George Galloway's Respect Party got elected as well. They were fanatically in favour of the mosque. So that meant that the Labour group, who had been in favour of it, now opposed it because George was in favour of it. So Labour had to be against it. So the, the Lord moved in, in in power in answer to our, our prayer and in answer to the prayers of so many others. And uh, and the planning permission was refused. Uh, it, it, um, the council, Newham Council, even took the uh, the mosque people to to court to keep cease to get them to cease uh, operations. They won that case, um, and that's where it is at the moment in the long grass. So they don't have that they're carrying on their activities, um, not illegally in the in the sense that the police can go in and arrest them all, but the, you know against planning law. And um, no doubt they'll they're thinking of of appealing to uh, to Europe and a very European Court of Human Rights. But then we always pray, this is a good thing to do, because you remember from Second Chronicles chapter 20, uh, King Jehoshaphat prays and gets the answer, and then they they know they go up to fully armed, but they won't have to, to fight, and they go out singing praises. When the praises went up, the glory came down and so confusion amongst their enemies. And we said confusion, among, confusion in the mosque. Um, it's an uh, Islamic fundamentalist group called Tabliki Jamaat, and it was based in Pakistan and India, uh, cross-border sort of thing. Well, we pray for confusion. We do pray for confusion you know, amongst the enemies of the Lord. And but we never, we never saw this one coming. That the Tabligh Jamatics itself split. The Pakistani contingent went in one direction. The Indian contingent went in another direction. So now the Indian Tabligh Jamat own the uh, the Tabligh Jamat uh, mosque in Dewsbury in 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 northern England in Yorkshire. Is that? Yorkshire, Lancashire, Northern England. Somebody's going to pick me on that. Uh, Yorkshire and 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 Tabliki, uh, the Pakistan contingent left with the one in, in in London. We never saw that. That's confusion in spades. That is, I mean, that is huge confusion. That the, the group itself splits. So uh, yeah, you know, well, when we do the little well, things. Really. Well, we well, go down and pray. You see, we go down and pray, and we do the little things that only we can do. The law can't go down there and pray, but we can. And when we do the little things, we can leave the clever stuff, the miracles, to the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Never fails. Well, finally, finally, Stephen, we've got a situation which is very simplistic. Um, I know, but the average person in this world thinks this way. Well, why don't we simply say, as it's gone on to an international scale, through Europe, the whole thing, look, if... They will allow us to build a cathedral in Pakistan. We will allow them to build a mosque in London. Yeah, they, they, they seem to be a little bit more fervent about their religion than we are about ours. That's if we can decide what our religion is. Um, our religion in the United Kingdom constitutionally is Christian. The Bible is part of our constitution. The king kissed it at his, at his coronation, promised before Almighty God to do this, to uphold the laws of God, the true profession of the gospel. But when it comes down to whether he can keep those laws, that's down to a group of ruthless, um, uh, uh, scrupulous, ambitious, um, avaricious, self-absorbed men and women whom we call the king's ministers. Um, so we can't decide whether we are Christian 
or secularist in, in this country. But of course, Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, they know exactly what they are. So uh, they are, they're they prepared to, to stick up for, the, for their God um, in a way that, uh, well, that we aren't, even if we could decide which our God is. We need to choose, to be quite honest, which way we shall go. Um, as for me and my family, we will, we will, um, we will I don't worship the Lord. But um, hey, so we, we, I mean, we we pray that our leaders in the UK will humble themselves, repent, and seek the Lord, because the Lord is a founder of all wisdom. And what they're doing at the minute, when they think uh, a man is a woman, or that um, you, you can get everybody to heat their homes electric without putting in, in the infrastructure, um, it's a politics of absurdity. They believe stupidities because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Uh, so we pray for them to repent. And we all need to repent, of course. We all need to repent of our silence and stand up for the Lord. Mm. Stephen, thank you so much. That um, food for thought there. We'll see you very shortly. Bless you, Rodney. Thank you for having me.